Hi everyone, I'm Suzanne Clemens, one of the associate pastors at Trinity United Methodist Church in Lafayette, Indiana, and it's a privilege uh, for me to be bringing the message this weekend. The message is uh, inspired by passages uh, from both the Old and the New Testament, um, specifically the first chapter of Genesis and portions of Matthew chapter 3. Well, here at Trinity, uh, this month we are in the middle of a sermon series that's focused on our fall uh, stewardship season. And this is a special time of the year in our church calendar uh, where we look closely at um, and we celebrate the ministries that God has called us into together. Um, we um, celebrate the, the work that God is doing among us. Um, and we're also planning how we're going to continue that work um, in the year ahead, 2022. And our theme this year for our stewardship season is growing to serve. And each Sunday we're spotlighting an area of ministry. And I'm delighted today to be able to share with you about the aspects of Trinity's ministry that come under my care as an associate pastor. Um, these are areas of ministry that I uh, think are broadly as uh, caring ministry. And under this large umbrella of caring ministry, uh, we have two specific efforts uh, that really nurse. Um, and the first one that I want to talk about with you all today is our friendly visitors. And our friendly visitors are members of our congregation who have a calling or a, a special desire to reach out and connect in friendship to those in our church who, um, for whatever reason, um, can't be physically present and participate in the life of of the day-to-day -day activities of the church um, in the way that many of us can. Um, often it may be uh, advancing age that becomes a barrier to being present, you know, in the faith community, or it could be a disability or chronic condition at any age, um, or it might be just a specific set of circumstances. Um, but whatever the reason, our friendly visitors have that nudge to reach out and to connect with those um, who are at a distance so that they continue to be a vital part of our church family here at Trinity. You know, when we reach out to say um, to, to these important uh, folks in our congregation, you know, we remember you. Uh, you are important to us. We care about you. Uh, you know, you're special to God, you're special to us at Trinity, and you're special to me. And we make that effort you know, to keep those beloved members part of the fold. And, you know, there's probably an element of vulnerability in their lives. Although, honest, you know, if we're, if we're uh, truthful, we all live in vulnerability, don't we? Yeah. And what we're called to do is to see each other and to bless folks, not just in their vulnerability, but in the sum of all that they are. We're called to see them and to bless them. As Christians, this business of blessing should permeate all of who we are and everything that we do. And the thoughts that I'm sharing with you about blessing today are not mine originally. So I want you to know that I'm drawing from a beautiful book about the spiritual life called Sacred Fire from a man of faith named Ronald Rollheiser. So any wisdom that you glean from this uh, today's message um, or um, anything that you hear <laughs> um, that seems particularly meaningful. You want to attribute that to the Holy Spirit um, um, and to Richard Rollheiser. And uh, the passages from Scripture that we're looking at, well, they're crucially important passages from the very first chapter of Genesis and then another passage from the beginning of New the New Testament in Matthew chapter 3. And what the Bible tells us is that God permeates all of creation from the very beginning, right? So there's this original blessing out of which everything that God creates is good, and every day God looks at it, and it's good, and then on the last day, God takes it all in and says that creation is very good. So God creates, God looks at creation, and God delights in it. And then blessing is repeated um, in, 
well, throughout the, the Bible, but today we're looking specifically at a couple of specific passages. So in that book of Matthew, in chapter 3, when Jesus' head breaks through the baptismal water, when Jesus is baptized, and God sees him, delights in him, and says, This is my beloved, or my blessed child, with whom I am so pleased. I delight in him. And Rollheiser suggests that this just might be the pivotal moment, you know, when Jesus' consciousness fully takes in who he is. Jesus is God's son, and God delights in him. And for the rest of his life, Jesus lives out of that knowing and that blessing and the knowledge that God is with him. And then Jesus invites others into that blessing, right? His entire ministry is about getting people to truly see themselves as beloved children of God, to wake up to the presence of God within them, and then to live out of the peace and power that comes from that place of trust and surrender and blessing. And folks, you know, I am blessed, and you are blessed. You know, our Bible makes it abundantly clear and I hope that you have had some, you know, interior experience where God has whispered that truth to you, that you are blessed and that God delights in you. And if that's something that hasn't um, happened to you, I would invite you to reach out to me or Pastor Tracy or um, uh, privately, because I know for sure that it's not because God isn't speaking that to you, but sometimes stuff, you know, life stuff, what well, gets in the way of our being able to hear that blessing. And I've been watching a TV show recently um, that I'm really enjoying, and I realized that the reason that I love it is because it's a story about blessing. And the show is called Ted Lasso. Maybe some of you have heard of it. Um, it's about a soccer team in England. It's an underdog team. And uh, an American football coach named Ted Lasso um, who knows nothing about the game of soccer. Well, he's recruited over to England to coach this team. And Ted Lasso is about the most naive, honest, humble, self-deprecating, um, comedy of errors kind of coach that you can possibly imagine. So it's, he seems like a joke for this job, <laughs> you know, except for one thing. He loves the players. He delights in them. He loves everyone, actually. I mean, this is a, a guy full, just full of smiles and little homemade gifts and encouragement. And when he inherits this team of ragtag players, uh, the one who's causing the most trouble is this egotistical know-it-all um, named Jamie Tart. And as we learn more about Jamie, we find out that he um, has experienced um, awful verbal and emotional abuse from his father throughout his life. So Jamie is, is a hurt, bitter young man. You know, he's experienced the, the opposite of blessing in his life. But now, there's someone who really sees him and who sees past his ego and his brokenness and insists on um, keeping him in the fold. And you begin to see that what Jamie needs is to receive blessing. And that's just what a coach Ted, Ted Lasso does. He blesses Jamie. Um, and now I should mention, you know, while I am recommending the show as one that I enjoy, I should also say that it comes with a mature language warning. Um, so be just be mindful of that if you want to go check it out. Well, as we mature, all of us, on the Christian journey as followers of Jesus, you know, once we have come into adulthood um, and gotten our roots into the ground a little, figured out who we are in our family lives, in our work lives, um, in our social circles, the next step for maturing Christians is to begin giving our lives away, to live in the service of others. And Rollheiser writes that the height of spiritual maturity is the capacity and the desire to bless other people. And our mission statement here at Trinity is 
growing in love and service through relationships with God and community. Now, our relationships are marked by love and service. In other words, our relationships are bound by mutual blessing. And our relationship with God um, keeps us grounded in the awareness that we are blessed. You know, to bless others, we have to operate out of a consciousness of blessing. So we connect with God through being blessed, and then we, we reach out to bless others. And so what does that look like when we bless others? Well, I want to, to give you three specific aspects of blessing today um, that I'm drawing here again from, from Richard uh, Rollheiser. Um, the person doing the blessing sees and admires the other person. Um, second, it's important to speak well of the person. And third, a full and complete blessing involves giving away some part of your life so that the person may have more life. Now, if you haven't had a chance to do it already, I hope that you read uh, the Stewardship blog, a post that was written this week. Um, it was beautifully written by Gloria Thompson. And Gloria is one of our awesome, uh, friendly visitors. And she wrote about her experience of being a friend and nurturing a relationship with our Trinity folks who live at Westminster Village. And Gloria wrote specifically about the importance of listening and being fully present, fully seeing um, her friends. And if you spend any time with Gloria, you know how much the people that she's in relationship, you know how much they mean to her. There's deep friendship there, and she, she admires them. She speaks so highly of them. You know, and, and then there are, are the days in which she structures her hours and her plans to prioritize their needs, because that's what we do for each other when we care for each other. And Gloria and I had, um, we had the um, pleasure of getting together earlier this week, and we talked about this shared opportunity that we have to bless folks. And what was also clear was the ways that they bless us. Um, and right now, in my own season of challenges with my parents, it's been a blessing to me to have so many of my Trinity friends caring for me. Um, and this includes uh, Carmen Nicholson, one of our Westminster folks who turned 100 this summer, who calls me to ask how I'm doing and how my parents are doing. And I know the challenges that Carmen has faced, you know, in her own journey, and I uh, can see the spiritual depth that is there in her, and I am blessed when she assures me in her wisdom that God is with my family and that um, in God's ways and in God's time, all is going to be well. And it's just a beautiful example for me of the interdependent community of friends that's evident of God's Spirit present in this church family. Now I've spent most of my time this morning uh, sharing with you all about the friendships born out of the relationships nurtured by our friendly visitors. And another way that we have the opportunity to bless others here at Trinity is through the tangible support um, when folks come to us in need. You see, we're called to respond in love to those who, in our church and in our community, who are experiencing hardship. And in the past week alone, Trinity has received and responded to um, several needs, including the following. Um, a phone payment to avoid um, someone whose phone was about to be disconnected. Um, someone who needed help with their energy bill after, after having a terrible case um, of COVID that lasted a couple of months. Someone else needed help um, after their water uh, service was disconnected because they had missed work due to quarantining um, due to COVID. Another person needed guidance accessing mental health services. Someone else needed um, help with gas to take a child uh, with kidney disease to a physician in Indy. And then another um, person needed um, encouragement, a daughter-in-law living on the East Coast who's advocating for her mother-in-law 
with disabilities and financial hardship living here in Lafayette. And in all of these situations, we first have the opportunity to be a blessing. And that begins with us listening to and admiring the people who reach out to us. So in my conversations this week, um, the words I've spoken have been, you know, I can tell what a struggle this has been for you. Um, you're working so hard to take care of your daughter. Um, it's not easy to reach out to others, and you're trying hard to see what you can piece together to make ends meet. I can hear how tiring this is, and I want to encourage you. I know how difficult it is to advocate for a loved one when you live so far away. Sometimes we are able, through our caring fund, to give tangible monetary relief. You know, our caring fund is a special fund supported by your intentional giving, whether online or in our specially marked baskets that are out on communion Sundays. And often, I refer folks to other sources that I know can provide greater relief and ongoing support. And always, I seek to understand and to encourage, and if the door opens, to invite them into this community, if they're all not already a part of Trinity, you know, where they can find a whole community of people who are intentionally seeking to give their lives away to be a blessing to others. Friends, we are blessed. God is with us. God walks with us and guides the way ahead. And this work of blessing, it is good stuff, right? Um, if you're not already part of a concrete relationship of blessing here at Trinity, I hope that you'll pay attention to any nudges within you to step into new relationships. And of course, your giving supports all that we do here at Trinity uh, to nurture blessing. And I promise you, you know, it will make you feel really good to respond to any nudges that you notice. Rollheiser writes, when we bless others, it won't be long afterward that our hearts will feel an exuberance that will say, God, it feels good to be alive. When we act like God, we get to feel like God. And my friends, that feels really, really good. Thanks be to God.